My family hails from the Horn of Africa, in a land of those who fashion articulate expressions into poetry, while in recent history simultaneously obliterate the nation with ignorance and gun shells. I am Mushtaq Ta'ala, senior here at The Ohio State University. Amongst my many identities, I am a Muslim, Somali, American woman. Those are just the ostensible ones. My Somali heritage and ancestry offers insight on the people and customs that I've come from, while also taking part in my American lifestyle and mentality. My background, coupled with Central Ohio's large minority population, has strongly contributed to my desire to know the world, to connect with the world. You know, have you ever had the realization that each random passerby, every individual, is living a life as intense and multifarious as your own? Everyone is populated with their own dreams and aspirations, concerns, worries, family and friends, all of that inherited craziness. An incredible story. An incredible story that invisibly surrounds you like like the millions of atoms that make up you and the thousands upon thousands of other people that might appear as an extra sipping coffee at that cafe, the tapping keyboard, the blur of traffic on the highway, that lighted window at dusk. There's a word for that, by the way. It's Sonder, hashtag the more you know. <laughs> so we, as the human beings, we are starting to break down societal and territorial boundaries through global travel, the crossing of cultures, and social media. But there is an underlying limit to all of this progression. There is an underlying limit, and it's obvious when you look at it. I mean, when you're walking down the street and you see someone that you know, and you quickly look at your phone and hope, oh god, I hope he did not see me because I do not want to say hi right now, or how you don't know the name of someone that's been sitting next to you in class for the last 10 weeks because at this point it's really awkward to ask, hey, what's your name? I know you're in my lab group, but I forgot, <laughs> right? I mean, it's amazing, and it's incredible what we can know and learn from other people. We can read about different customs and backgrounds. We can learn about the universe, the ocean, people, and customs through scientific journals and documentaries. But we can do a lot of that too by simply talking to someone that's different from us, by simply taking a moment and having that dialogue and discussion. So there are 7.2 billion people and counting on the planet today, right now. That's a huge number. That's more than have ever lived, and it's also the most peaceful that it has ever been. And as Carl Sagan once said, take a look at that pale blue dot. That's here, that's home. On it, everyone you know, everyone you love, everyone you have ever heard of. The Earth is a small stage on a vast cosmic arena, and to me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another to cherish that pale blue dot, the only home that we have ever known. I am one of 1.7 billion Muslims on this planet, spread out through every continent, each living a life much different from mine, with different backs, backgrounds and lifestyles. Everyone is an individual, and we contribute to that larger human narrative. In the Muslim community, there's an underlying theme and it's Ummah, that everyone is your brother or sister, that we're all a family. And the basis of Islam lies upon five pillars. The testimony that there's only one God and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the last messenger. Prayer, fasting during the month of Ramadan, <laughs> fasting during the month of Ramadan, and the pilgrimage to Mecca, you are financially able, in addition to zakat, which is almsgiving. So whether that's through just discussions with other people or learning about others, we have the ability to communicate. We have the ability to just get to know other people by discussions and dialogue. Throughout my many, many identities, there's one that has followed me throughout my many stages of life, my identity as a worshiper. Whether that's praying in the book stacks at Thompson Library, in the corner of a classroom, a parked car on West Campus. These are places across campus, pockets of the public sphere. And those are the places where we call our prayer spots, our prayer locations. So 
So a group of college stu Ohio State students and I decided, hey, Muslim students across the board don't know where to pray, who to pray with, if it's cool if I pray in this classroom, because oh my gosh, what if there's like a class after this and I don't know what I'm gonna do, oh my goodness, right? So they, <laughs> we decided to build this app to relieve a problem, and we dubbed it Pillar. Not because prayer is one of the five pillars of Islam, albeit that is a bit cheeky, and we were trying to be a bit cheeky, but also because we wanted to have the ability to impart on other students when our time was gone, but the ability to impart a mobile application where they can take the opportunity to use technology as a resource to be human again, because my God, it feels like we've lost a part of what it is to be human. We've lost that person-to-person -person interaction that let's sit down and chat, let's talk about things that matter, let's look at each other. I mean, really look at each other, not like, yo, let's FaceTime each other type of looking at each other. So we dubbed this app, and it's being used today all over the world. It's being used in Madagascar, I don't know why, but Madagascar, Malaysia, New Zealand, the United States, and Canada, and 26 other countries. It's incredible what a group of students in Ohio, at Ohio State, the Ohio State University, were able to do, and the impact we were able to have on our global community. So today, this app is being used not only to congregate for prayer, but also to bring students together to open up that communication connection and also to track their prayer, to see how they're doing. Because prayer is something that's very, like I said, it's a pillar of Islam, it's very valuable in Islam. So it's being used for more than just what we wanted it to, to do. It's like a local map, it has prayer times, tells you which way is Mecca. So a lot of different things are being utilized with it. And our mission was to give people that ability to use technology to come together rather than use technology and have that like technology face, that avatar. So that's what it's being used for. So my name is Mushtaq Bashir Haja Abdi Duala. I'm a Muslim Somali American woman. And I think it's time for us to start taking off those jackets of hyphenated identities and remember what we are, and that's human. And to remember to stay connected and be one with ourselves and talk to the 7.2 billion other people. I know that's a bit crazy, but at least like a million of them. You could, right? <laughs> talk to those people. Get to know someone. Talk to them and release yourselves. Don't ask dumb questions like, oh, how was the weather today? <laughs> but kind of, so, what do you think the meaning of life is? Like, just ask each other questions that matter. And that's what I want to impart on you. And thank you for listening.